scripture today is, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. 1 John 4, 9 through 11. Okay, I'm sure you, I'm sure that all of you know what, know that today's what? What is today? Uh, Mother's, Day. Mother's Day. Did you give your mother a card for a present for Mother's Day? Yeah. This, this Mother's Day card says, Mom, I love you. Do you think your mother likes to hear you tell her that you love her? Of course she does. But do you know what? Your mother would like even more. She would like for you to show her that you love her. What are some ways you can show mom that you love her? Being kind, yes. Uh, hugs, kisses. What about helping around the house? Sure. Can you pick up your room, pick up your toys? <laughs> you know, that would show mom a lot. You could, um, what about if you obey her? Would that show her that you love her? Would I mind do you? Well, good, you should do chores. That works. <laughs> you, um, what if you get along, Mackenzie and Ryder get along with each other? Yeah. Would that show Mama that you love them? I wish. Uh huh. It's easy to tell tell Mom that you love her, but you really love her. Your actions will show it too. So, do you think that God likes to hear us tell Him that we love Him? I know He does, but He likes it even better when our actions show Him that we love Him. So, how do we do that? The Bible tells us that God showed his love for us by sending his one and only son, that we might live through him. It goes on to say, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. One of the best ways to show our love for God is to love one another. Yes, God likes, us, likes to hear us say, I love you, but he'd rather see it. So we celebrate Mother's Day, tell mom that we love her, but more important, let's remember to show her that we love her. As we worship today, let's tell God we love him. But more important, let's remember to show him by loving one another. Okay? So we're going to mind today and help Mama at the house, all three of y'all. Yes? Yeah. You don't have to do chores today. I did it once or two yesterday. Okay. So I don't have to do chores Well, but let's today. mind and pick up our toys today. <laughs> you want a quick prayer? No. Dear Lord, we've come to your house today to say I love you. Help us to go out of here today and show you that we love you by our actions. Amen. Well, one good thing about being the preacher is every once in a while you can change things up. Normally we go by a set lectionary every Sunday. However, I'm changing it up today. <laughs> Since today is Mother's Day, I think it was time to change things up. So we have come together this morning for two primary reasons. First and foremost, to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with our worship. The other is to honor our mothers, our grandmothers, and the mothers of our children. These are lifetime tasks, neither of which that can be confined to a one-hour service. The telephone company tells us that Mother's Day is by far their busiest day of the year. It is a day for greetings, a day of expressing our love. And it's also a day for remembrance. I do not believe that anything has ever been said or will be said that is elegant enough or expressive enough to articulate the true values of a mother. One mother said, the joy of motherhood is what a woman experiences when all the kids finally go to bed. <laughs> a mother talking to an old college friend said, remember before I was married, I had three theories about raising children. Well, now I got three children and no theories. A mother has a fascinating ability 
to be almost everywhere at once. To be able to see everything at once. And she alone can somehow squeeze an enormous amount of living into a 24-hour day. A man was walking along a California beach and he stumbled across an old lamb. He picked it up, rubbed it, and out popped a genie. The genie said, listen, four people have released me from this lamp this month. And I am getting a little sick of these wishes. So you can forget about three. You only get one wish. The man thought about it for a while and said, I have always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I'm afraid to fly and I get very seasick. Could you build a bridge to Hawaii so I can drive over there for a vacation? The genie laughed and said, that is impossible. Think of the logistics of that feat. How would the supports even reach the bottom of the Pacific Ocean? You need to think of another wish. So the man thought about it and said, I have been dating for a year, and the woman I date always say that I don't care and that I am insensitive. So I wish that I could fully understand women, to know exactly how they feel and know exactly what they are thinking. Jeannie Pauls for a second. You want that bridge to be two lanes or four lanes? <laughs> now a mother has an angelic voice of a member of the celestial choir as she sings the Brahms lullaby to a baby held lovingly in her arms. Yet the same voice can dwarf the sound of an amplifier when she calls her children in for supper or cheers them on at a game. And a mom can be as tough as nails when she needs to be. A drill sergeant was frustrated in his efforts to make a soldier out of a certain recruit. The training lagged behind on marches. He used any excuses to get sick home. Grumbled constantly about the food and never made his bunk properly. But one day, a noticeable change took place in this young man's attitude. When asked what he attributed the soldier's change of attitude, the drill sergeant explained, threats and punishment did not work. So I had to resort to the ultimate weapon. I called his mother. <laughs> a mother is called old-fashioned to her teen by her teenage kids, just mom to her third grader, and simply mama to the little two-year-old. But there is hardly a thrill in life that can compete with pointing to that wonderful woman and being able to say to all the world, that is my mother, that is my mom. As we all know, the quickest way for a mother to get attention from her children is to attempt to sit down and look comfortable. <laughs> Dr. James Dotson shared a story about the time when he came home when his son Ryan was a small baby. It had been a terrible day for Shirley, his wife. Ryan had been sick and had been crying all day. Once as she was changing his diaper, the telephone rang and Shirley reached over to answer it before fastening his diaper. Just then, Ryan had an attack of diarrhea. She cleaned up the mess and put him in some clean clothes. Then she took him into the living room to feed him. As she was burping him, he threw up all over himself, her, and the couch. Dotson writes, when I came home, I could smell the aroma of motherhood everywhere. Shirley cried out to him, was all of this in my contract? <laughs> it is hard to find free time as a mom. There was a cartoon that portrayed a three-year-old freckle-faced boy standing in the hallway. His pajamas unsnapped, his diaper sagging, and he had a little teddy bear dangling out of his hand. 
He is standing in front of his mother and father's bedroom door, which is shut. On the door is a little sign written by a weary mother. Clothes for business. Motherhood temporary out of order. One day a little girl was sitting and watching her mother do dishes at the kitchen sink. She suddenly noticed that her mother had several strands of white hair sticking out in contrast to her brunette head of hair. Why are some of your hairs white, Mom? She asked. Her mother replied, Well, every time you do something wrong and make me cry or unhappy, one of my hairs turns white. The little girl pondered about that for a while, then asked, so how come all of Grandma's hair are white? <laughs> Grandmothers are very special women too. The question was asked, what is a grandmother to some third graders? A grandmother is a lady who has no children of her own, so she likes other people's little boys and girls. Grandmothers do not have to do anything except be there. They're old, so they shouldn't play too hard, and they should never run. It is enough that they drive us to the market where the pretend horse is and have a lot of quarters ready. If they take us for walks, they should slow down passing things like pretty leaves and caterpillars. They should never say, hurry up. Usually grandmothers are fat, but not too fat to tie your shoes. They wear glass, glasses and funny underwear. They can take their teeth and gums out. Grandmothers do not talk baby talk like other visitors do because it's hard to understand them. When they read to us, they don't skip parts of the story or mind that it's the same story over again. The last one, everybody should try to have a grandmother, especially if you don't have a television, because they're the only grown-ups who will have time for you. Almost all of us have fond memories of our families, of our mothers and grandmothers. And though my mother had been gone now for a couple of years, I have so many precious memories of her. Mothers and homes. When you mention one, you just automatically think of the other. And when most of us think of home, we forget the troubles that may surround us and remember the sounds and sights and smells of home. Of the screen door banging in the summertime, the aromas of cookies just out of the oven, or maybe the smell of your favorite meal. Home, we enjoy the sense and acceptance there of being loved. And we knew that moms loved us. We were certain of that. Friends, this is also true with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he loves us so very much. He loved us enough to die for us on the cross. He loved, loves and cares for you and me. We need to allow him to be not only our Savior, but our Lord. And when we do, he will wipe every tear from our eyes. Mothers have tears, tears for their children. Few things are more powerful than the tears and prayers of a mother. Few things are more tender than a mother's hug or compassionate touch. It just be, may, may be true what Napoleon said, the hands that rock the cradle rules the world. The writer of Hebrews reminds us to encourage one another daily. In the scriptures in 1 Thessalonians commands us 
Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Mothers understand this and are often the voice that lifts us up. The voice of encouragement. Mothers who have a relationship with Jesus have a godly ability to love even the, in the midst of their own pain and suffering. Mothers are truly a gift from God. I would like to close with this reading of a poem entitled, My Mother. Your love, I know, I've seen it, seen your tears. You have given to me my life. You have walked through hours and days and years of heartache, toil, and strife to see that I could have the best that you could give to me. You gave up needs of, and often rest. You viewed eternity to do his will my highest call. And by your special care, I stood and walked and did not fall. You held me up in prayer through strands of gray may brush your hair. And miles divided our way, I know that by your quiet prayer, you've helped me day by day. You've shown me how to give, to share, to put my own needs last. You helped me see and be aware that life is so soon past. Despite your love, I would not dare, for there is not another who spreads her gentle love and care like you, my loving mother. Friends, uplift one another, encourage one another, Move forward in the faith and let the Holy Spirit transform you. Let the Holy Spirit conform you to the image of Christ. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.